Hello there, lovely people. Today, I'm not here to just mention the same old advice about the usual suspects of personal development. Meditation, working out, craft work, reading, journaling. Here's the twist. You see, it's not just about these habits. It's about something deeper, something more profound that elevated my life to a different level. It's about our perspective through which we view the world and the very essence of who we are. It's about focusing on the core of our being and shaping an identity that is truly us. And I believe we don't dedicate enough time to explore our sense of self. So in this video, I'm going to take you on a journey deep into the corners of my mind. I'm going to reveal to you four mindset habits that have not only transformed my life, but also forged a stronger, more profound connection with my sense of self. These habits aren't just routines, they're the secrets that have unlocked a happier me. So buckle up, get ready as we explore the four mindset habits that have reshaped how I perceive the world and most importantly, how I perceive myself. I think most of us want to start a journey of uncovering the most authentic version of ourselves to create a step-by-step -step plan to grow into the person we would like to be. But before we take that step, let's embark on a quest to understand where we currently stand, because I think that's where the magic begins. Now, imagine, what if I told you that the key to unlocking our full potential lies in the power of honesty? It's time to drop the fake ignorance and face the truth we've been hiding from ourselves. I know, it's tough. It's like staring into a mirror that reflects every detail of our being, how uncomfortable it may be. You see, self-deception is an art we've all mastered in this modern life. We rationalize bad habits that we should have stopped ages ago, sweep constructive criticism under the rug, and protect our egos from acknowledging our own shortcomings. I've been there. I used to fear confronting my weaknesses and flaws. I dodged my mistakes, pointed fingers at others, and created narratives to shield myself from shame. But let me tell you, growth begins when we look our discomfort right into the eyes. To break free from this self-imposed narrative, I embraced vulnerability. It sure isn't easy, especially when there's past traumas lurking in the shadows. But I realized it's better to confront these feelings of shame and face my truth head on. No more pretending that I never make mistakes. In this journey, I learned that every human has quirks and areas of improvement. Nobody is flawless. It's about recognizing your strengths and weaknesses, your victories and defeats, without judgment or denial. From this place of pure authenticity, we get a clearer view of where we are in life, our deepest desires and the goals that truly resonate with our soul. But how do we take the first step towards this transformative journey? Well, lovely people, it's time to revisit some of those timeless practices I mentioned earlier in the video. Journaling, the sacred space where our thoughts, emotions and activities can flow freely. For me, it acts as a portal to my inner world, really a compass for emotional growth. And I combine it with meditation. It lets me observe my thoughts and emotions without judgment. I challenge myself to speak the complete truth in those private conversations I have with myself. My intentions, my feelings, my thoughts, everything. It's in this raw honesty where I found my true self. It sure is not easy to look into yourself and face your true self. But remember this, it's the courage to face our truths that starts our transformation. Now let's dive into mindset habit number two, emotional regulation. It's the skill to understand and respond to our emotions in a healthy, empowering way. In the past, I've never been one to show my emotions to everyone, but I soon realized that beneath this calm face, my behavior was often driven by unchecked feelings, sometimes melancholy or naive optimism. For instance, when I became sad, my escape route would often be hours of mind-numbing video games. I bet some of you can relate, but something interesting happened when I began to truly understand my emotions. I talked to some important people in my life, listened to some professionals on the topic of emotions, and read a few books. One fascinating point I want to share with you all is a concept from the Cabellion, the book that talks about the universal laws of life. It mentions a spectrum, much like love and hate, with degrees and shades in between. It mentions that emotions work the same way. They have poles and a neutral middle ground. Now, don't get me wrong, I am not suggesting we go through life as emotionless robots. Far from it. I think every emotion on that spectrum needs to be felt and experienced. But what's crucial though is our ability to regulate these emotional swings. This brings me to a beautiful term, equanimity. 
It's about finding that neutral sweet spot between that emotional whirlwind. Because when we move towards the extremes, whether that is the extreme sadness or the extreme euphoria, we risk losing control over our mind. My journey towards emotional regulation has been super transformative. It's like sailing a boat and gaining a better grip over the winds that once tossed me around. It feels like I'm less of a slave to my emotions. Of course, I still had my bad days, but overall, I feel like I have the power to stay calm and composed, even in heated conflicts. Take my relationship with my girlfriend, for instance. Instead of erupting in anger and trying to prove my point, I've learned to remain grounded and empathetic. It's a dance where I still feel every emotion, but now I know how to navigate them. Remember, emotional regulation is a skill you can grow over time, just like any other skill. I think the key for this is self-awareness. Pay close attention to your emotions. They are physical sensations, your thoughts, your behaviors. This led me to recognize my emotional patterns and triggers, which helped me to develop my emotional intelligence. One valuable tool I discovered from a good friend is the feeling wheel. It's a simple yet effective exercise for identifying and understanding our emotions. Some do it every day, I do it whenever I feel the need. It all comes down to knowing yourself better. So people, now that I shared my second mindset habit, remember this. Emotional regulation has been key for trying to master my inner world. All right, new spot, new shirt, new mic. I thought I'd spice it up for this next habit because it has some fantasy attached to it. I used to be a young gamer, getting lost in the realms of Call of Duty, Pokemon, Skyrim, investing weeks of my life in the pursuit of the grind. Every level up and quest completed was a little spark of dopamine, but there always came a point where boredom hit. I remember looking at my in-game progress, the skills I trained, the valuable items I've gathered, only to realize one thing. All of this effort, this grind, was bound to a digital character and not part of the actual me and my true identity. I was not my video game character. At some point, I had a great realization. What if I could use this passion for grinding and adventure into my real life? What if life itself was the ultimate RPG? A big quest filled with skills to master, worlds to explore, and a unique identity to develop. Just like in those games, not every moment in life is fun. There are difficult moments that test us. Just as there are side quests that seem random at first, but enrich our journey when we try them out. Guess what helped me? Some days I started seeing my daily to-do list as a collection of side quests, each contributing to my personal growth. A quest! This shift in mindset has made me more productive, as I now love the grind and to add this progress to me, my own identity. For example, I don't know if you know the overall skill overview in Skyrim, but I try to see my personal skill set just like that. Where our skills are a blend of internal and external factors, with the most critical ones located in our mind, body and soul. My belief is that these are the skills that truly shape our sense of self and identity. Of course, real life grinding isn't as straightforward as in video games. It's tougher, more time consuming and there are way more external factors that are influencing our progress. And as I said in previous videos, most people are addicted to immediate gratification. When we play a game, we get a little dopamine rush when we get a notification, when we upgrade our stats or receive in-game money. This reward motivated us to keep going. But here's the good part. We can find that same reward system in our everyday lives. It's not through in-game achievements, but rather through self-reflection. Take journaling, for instance. Just 10 minutes of writing down your gratitude, reflecting on your day and acknowledging the actions that make you feel accomplished can make you feel amazing. What I try to do, I write down three or four actions I did that day that made me feel accomplished. Famous motivational speaker Tony Robbins calls these magic moments. These moments can be anything. A task that you did from your side quest list, a conversation you had with a good friend, a walk outside, whatever. But I don't just write it down, I really feel and realize the value it had on my life. How it benefited me and my adventure. You see, gratitude is a muscle in our mind that can be strengthened. It's a tool to make us appreciate. And believe me, we can be so grateful to be playing this big adventure called life. And while we're on the topic of this adventure called life, try and see it as a multiplayer game where other players are also on quests, collecting treasures, and racing towards their own unique goals. And in this game called Life, we often find ourselves compared to other players. Their progress, their items, money. So this next mindset habit is to stop judging people and comparing myself to others. Would you spend your hard-earned cash on a game just to spend your time envying other players and to nitpick at their achievements? Of course not. And guess what? Life is infinitely more precious than any game. Yet, many of us are stuck in this negative loop of comparison. So, 
I stopped doing this and I highly advise you to also break free from this self-destructive cycle. You see, when we quit measuring ourselves against others, we make room for more self-love and self-acceptance. It allows us to focus on our unique journey while having empathy and understanding for the other adventurers in his life. See how all of these habits are interlinked? Now let's address the elephant in the room. Breaking this habit isn't easy. It's deeply ingrained in human nature. But like everything else, with consistent effort, we can rewrite this narrative. Step one is to accept yourself. Like I mentioned earlier, I really tried to recognize and embrace every part of my being strengths and weaknesses. I was very fortunate to have a loving family that stimulated my self-acceptance from day one, but I recognize that not everyone has the same privilege. Regardless of your past, self-love and acceptance are really important. It's okay to strive for self-improvement. I'm on that journey too, but let's not forget to love the person we are right now in this very moment. To do this, self-awareness is key. Pay attention to your thoughts and emotions when you catch yourself judging or comparing. Here is some wisdom I learned. We often judge others based on our own insecurities. So when we catch yourself in the act, use it as an opportunity to learn about yourself. Why did you just think that? It's an incredible journey of self-discovery. And don't forget to display a little bit of empathy into your interactions. Try to understand where others are coming from, acknowledging their unique journeys, struggles, and strengths. We're all just players in this fast game called life. Breaking free from the change of comparison and judgment takes time and patience. So be kind to yourself during this process. If you fall back on your old behavior and find yourself comparing and judging, don't beat yourself up over it. Instead, use it as a chance to grow and evolve. So, my fellow adventurers, let's rewrite some of the rules of this grand game called life. Forming an identity on anything besides external factors is not easy, but these four mindset habits have helped me increase my sense of self. Hopefully you can use this information and see if it works for you as well. And as always, feed the mind, the body and the soul, as one cannot function without the other. Enjoy the rest of your day. Much love.